Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to be actually diving back into the salt mine matches that happened quite a long time ago at this point. Uh, you can see September 25th uh, was when I started playing the games against Kronovi. I'm probably going to dive through all of the matches I played. And if you guys are interested in some series that uh, maybe First Killer played or someone else and uh, against another player and you guys want me to dive into the analysis of that one, uh, feel free to let me know. But first, we're going to jump into these ones. Uh, these are the first games that were ever played in the salt mine. This was episode one. And let's just get right into it. I think I'm going to stick with my perspective on these games. Uh, I'll see how you guys feel about that. Maybe you, you guys want me to change back and forth depending on the, the, the perspective. I'll probably dive into his perspective sometimes depending on the, the, the play or the shot or whatever. Just to get uh, just to get an opinion on how he saw the play and maybe talk about what his decision making was. Um, but I've got this little epic pen thing. It's called epic pen. And basically I can draw on the screen and I'll draw arrows and, and show you guys exactly what what I'm thinking or where I'm like looking at or whatever else and then uh, I basically have to just tab back into the game so that's a little unfortunate little thing that I have to do but because I'm clicking off the game then I have to tab back into it to use the controls. Let's just start the game see how it goes. So on these kickoffs I'm usually just trying to center the ball. I'm watching his uh, his nameplate here so I always try to cancel it out. And I think the nerves really got to both of us in the early parts of this game. Try to take an early shot with power. Right here I know he's gonna get the boost so I'm already leaving. Um, it's good to cut your losses once you know he has the, the pace on the ball. Right there's a throwaway, that's when I start to dive, dive in. So basically, if I'm going to go back on this, the second that touch happens, and I see him turn his car to the left, I know that this ball is already traveling too far away from him if I close the distance. The problem is, if, if I go any further this way and I don't turn immediately, then what I do is I end up putting myself in a very, very difficult situation where I can't really shadow properly because I'm going to be in this spot and I can't really turn away in time. He has a pretty free shot back right corner. So it's kind of all or nothing. And the thing is, I know that if he doesn't if he doesn't chip this ball in, then he brings it further out here and he lets the ball roll, then I can still come this way. But because he makes that touch, I have to immediately turn right. Um, anyway, let's move back into that play. Okay, so he bounced off the wall uh, from that 50-50. Once again, I see him let go. It's the same thing here. Um, I see the opening and I, I try to take it immediately because if I don't, like once he drives away from the ball and he's given this much space, which I think is a common thing he did in this whole salt mine. And I think it's one of the roots of his problems of not being able to create a play. Is I see that opening and then I I basically pounce on it immediately. That gives me enough time to get this back. Oh, actually, I don't go for the back corner. Okay, there it is. Once I see him jump, then I take the back corner. I think I didn't want to give him space early on in this game. Take the boost and I have some space. Let the ball roll out on top of me. It's pretty good. I should have scored here, I think, actually. I probably could have just banged that once he made the the miss a little bit uncharacteristic by me to make the make that jump off the wall but once again i think nerves were really playing here we i think we went yeah almost two minutes without a goal and then it sort of just started being like a <laughs> a shooting frenzy all right so he gave me a lot of space by backing off there a little bit too early of a, uh, of a chip here i sh really should have probably uh let this ball roll so once i get this i can go get the boost he's so far away or let the ball roll further ahead because i could let it come out to here and he's still like right here on the pitch near his goal chipping it early yeah i'm trying to make it non-linear but with him being so far away i have to, i can force him in a little bit more then chip it into the the midfield a lot of players will expect a shot once the ball is in this location so if i just bring it um across at that point where he's trying to block this probably this half of the goal um that can really throw him off but once again nerves are playing really early into this so i'm going to bring it early and then just let him hit the ball i back off to make sure i get the possession still doing a really good job of still holding on to possession even in this situation. Um, that could have been really dangerous for him if I just went a little bit more wide on the ball and then took a shot. So I'm not going to keep repeating the nerves thing. I definitely think that I wasn't playing my best here. But once again, this still held possession even with low boost here. Don't want to give him too much space. Probably my first giveaway where I really couldn't do anything about it. If he cleared that more towards goal, I probably would have been scored on. Alright, once again, just I don't want to flip at all in these situations with low boost just trying to play with that boost timing he ended up getting it speaking awkward touches to uh give me self space uh give me self yeah, nice um so right here a little touch off the wall try to get this pad once i see him do this i know he's gonna bait like trying to bait me in so if i continue going forward he's just gonna pop it over like it's probably gonna end up right around this this spot on the wall so what i do is i i fake forward 
I know that if he's using ball cam, he can see like around this area. Like that's what he sees. So he he knows where I am, and me going forward there is gonna make him backflip. So with 23 boost, all I need to do is just jerk my car forward and then come back, and that allows me to give the like take the space. And once he's given this way like this. I know that he has to come closer. So I'm not going to use my boost again. I'm going to bait him in. So I jerk my car again. See that this whole little like, this is all a little mind game. It's all about chess. Um, I have 23 boosts. I know he has 100. So right now I'm using this little, this little thing in my head says, okay, I've got 23 over here. He's got 100. He just used a little bit. So now maybe he's now, now down to 90. And I'm just like trying to chip away at this number while I have the 23. I don't want to do anything until he's like lower and he's a little bit more dangerous because right now he's pretty confident he's like okay i'm in the corner i've got 90 90 boost he thinks i have zero maybe or like maybe he thinks i have 10 or something so he can kind of be a little more aggressive here and not really be punished for it so he can go for this and then back out and he still can get boost um meanwhile i can't really do anything if i make any overcommit in this situation it's gonna be a goal for me so or against me so just jerk forward to make him come in then i bait him in again that's when i can challenge Right here he didn't take the boost that's a, a misplay as well he should have used his boost advantage that's something i would do right, is once i get that 50 50 like this player being me in this situation um i would have went for immediately for this boost because I, he should know i'm low and then gra grab this, this boost i would have been a really si sticky situation if he went for that boost with the speed he had um but he he relinquished possession uh for the uh the boost in the, the middle field which is fine but um ended up giving me possession again so that was uh, a little scary, but I actually knew he was going to jump for that. I just like got in the way of the goal, uh, like the goal side. Um, all I had to do was just jump in the way of his uh, trajectory right here. I see him jump and then it's going to bounce off to the right. And that's where I get the free goal from. Because right now I know he's in the net. There he is. He landed in the net with zero, which is a pretty big overcommit. And then I could just take a shot. Almost missed it too. Let's be, <laughs> let's be real. But uh, perfect place with bottom left corner. So a lot's happened in this first two minutes. I think uh, so far what can be learned is um, these tournaments can be really different compared to like how ranked play goes. Um, a lot of players are like, oh, I could beat these players in these situations, but the stress of like what's on the line and how many people are watching and stuff, it's a lot harder to, uh, to play than you think. All right, so he gave me space here off that touch. I had to wait for his flick on the goal. It wasn't that strong because of his position. So I knew I could just wait and not be too panicked about um, like any shot that would be too hard to save on that little touch on the wall there. I'm just trying not to get, try not to give him space. I know that when, I when I've given him the, uh, like Kronobi space in the past, it's always re like resulted in a lot of pressure and goals. Cause he likes to stay close. Um, even when he has no boost, I think he's got a, he's changed that a little bit, but you can see right here, he's just doing early turns. I do die, but I think he gets a goal here. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He ended up faking me. He really could have scored regardless, so, you know, it's not really a fault on my end. Like, that demo was really good um, right here. I don't know. Maybe I could have approached this ball differently. Let's see. You know what? I could have. I mean, I do have 15 boosts. So it's a little bit difficult to say, but just from, like, a fly cam or, like, right here. Okay, this is a, what's happening. Okay, so um, when I was here and he hit the ball over, I could have maybe looped wide if I had, like, 20 more boost and then came at the ball. But because I have 15, I'm trying to stay at the pace of the ball and then get over to him. But that l allows him to use his 100 boost and come into me. I think maybe it was a misplay to move up as much as I did. And maybe I can grab the back corner and relinquish possession a little bit. Then make a play. But, like, once again, my whole game plan going into this this series with Kronovi was to stay close to him. So, I mean, you got to cut your losses, like I said. Good demo, and then he could have immediately shot this. Good play. All right, let's move on. And I think this is where I started to figure out his game plan and then kind of run away with this game. Uh, for those who don't know, I mean, these ob obviously there's going to be spoilers because you can see the, <laughs> the tags on the bottom. Good boost grab by him. So I think he's focusing a little more on resources. Right here, he should go for the back corner. And I know that, so I go forward instead. That was his first misplay. A little bit of a panic by him because like honestly he should know i'm like at no boost here oh he tried to pass it back i guess but he did grab the boost in, in the in <laughs> the middle of doing that right here i'm just trying to take possession i really don't want to get 50 50 in this situation um once he turns from that boost so it's better for me to flick this immediately because if i get dunked at all i can't recover like i know i have zero boost here and i can't really give away the ball him jumping early once again gives me a little bit of space to make possession that's the first touch where i can finally get boost right there when he passes it across I see that he's pretty far. 
thought he would dive into the 50 50 right here he's gonna pass to the left i'm gonna go for the boost if he goes for this it's a really bad idea and there it is it's a free goal not really much to use the uh the pen for here just to basically keep my movement and playing off his touches he kept panicking and giving the ball back right away like he would jump at the first opportunity which uh, a lot of 3v3 players do that um but in 1v1s and even 3v3 honestly i don't know why people in threes do that because it's just just as bad of a giveaway most of the time just let it come back to your teammate all right so here i can't cross this line at all like he could just boom it so i'm gonna kind of do this thing called posturing which is like a 45 degree angle to the to my goal or to the player or like the, the angle in between and this is just to give myself options if i need to turn away i can if i need to turn into him i can i'm just gonna make sure i always face like in between to give myself as many options as possible uh this is gonna be a big pop and then an attempt on a demo i think i get the save here as well yeah that's pretty difficult like usually when someone goes for these uh these bump plays oh the ball's being weird let me go back a little further so in these situations usually what i try to do is like go up and above this player because they're gonna go below the ball they don't really want to touch the ball anymore it's hard though because um he could fake the air dribble or just air dribble it more so what i usually try to do is go a little bit above the ball and then tip my nose down to try and get in the way in the way of the ball this is a pretty good dribble by uh by Kronovi to bring it really high nice little touch in the back and then i bring it to the corner and this should give me the boost in the corner make sure to avoid demos of the wall that's really dumb by me you know, I'm up, a, I'm up a goal and there's a minute left and I have so much space. Like I could let this ball bounce a few more times. For some reason, I I for some reason I thought this turn right here was a turn in. And that's why I thought I could get the opening if I got a lot of power. But once again, it's pretty wasted possession by me to throw that ball away. I'm going to make sure to grab this boost because he did throw the ball away. A little bit too heavy of a touch, but he does commit pretty heavily into that challenge too. All right, so here, once again, I have to be a little bit careful. I'm going to go on the back wall because he's pretty high up. Brings it down on the pop. That's a pretty good play, just a little bit too high. So I did, I did block the goal if he, if he went. And same, so so my mentality in these situations here too is like, I've got 80, 80 boost. Um, I don't want to challenge into this because his car is going to be a little bit more better positioned for a ball that goes off this wall. The way that he's positioned, if you look from above, which is what I'm imagining, by the way. Okay, wait one sec. This is going to be kind of hard. Okay. Ah, no. Okay. Like, I see this game in vectors, so, like, in my situation here, like, going into this ball, right, he's kind of flat. Let me tap right here. Uh, if I tap, then it stops moving the screen, because I'm now on this program. Uh, he's kind of a flat wall, and me coming into this angle here, like, he's got a vector, like, a, a normal vector of, like, this, right? And so, this ball is going to probably bounce out this far, and you've got to think about where your car is going to go to afterwards. So, because I'm flipping into this, probably at, at a hard angle, if I do, like if I do a di diagonal flip, like top left, um, my car will flip forward over to here. Meanwhile, he'll probably do a side flip the way he's flying here. So his car will probably be, stay pretty stationary. Meanwhile, my car will fly out like this. So this ball will come out to the wall and then bounce back out. And I'll be over overly, oh, like overly committed. He might have low boost here, but it doesn't really matter. He can just take an early shot. And so if I challenge into this, it's going to be pretty poor. I hope that makes sense from what, I, from what I explained there. But that's my thinking in these. So it's better for me not to go for this at all. He flips into it. See, he did exactly what I thought. Like flip forward or sideways. It doesn't really matter. Either one. He could still... Um, I'm not sure why he flipped forward, actually. If he flipped sideways, it would have been fine. But he could keep his momentum after that flip and come back this way anyway. Um, but then I just get free, free ball possession with uh, 60 boost. And now I can use my space. Get a pretty decent flick. Good save as well. I'm going to bait him in until he turns forward, and then that's when I take the shot. And he had overcommitted once again. So, I don't need to do anything here. I'm up a goal. All I'm going to do is wait for his save. He pops it out. I force force him to have to make some uh, make some decisions here. So, he uses all of his boost to push forward, but then it's just a big fake to get destroyed by a, a high ball. So, if I was him in this situation, let's go back to him. So, a good save. Right here, you have to cut your losses. Like you can't, you can't push up yet. Like if he's going to push up, like he has to not use his boost. He has to stay with 30 and just like slowly inch up because he needs the boost to recover on a defense. If he's going to push up like this, um, I think pushing up is right because you can't let me just sit with the time, obviously, but you need to make a bit more of a trail, like to the ball. Like you, you can still loop wide here and then come back to make a save. You kind of want to find a better position on the ball. Like, so if I send the ball back to him, 
make a better make a better position save or place save and then play from there like right now i have all the all the options available to me so you have to like sort of make me do something but you can't overcommit your boost usage and just come up the field with zero and then just watch the ball go in i mean obviously he knows he made a mistake but it's just in hindsight like thinking about those decisions ahead of time All right, pretty good kickoff by me. So I'm able to get the boost and keep my, my pace. I know I know I was going to give up the back corner if I do that. I could have maybe went for that back corner first, but I didn't want to, you know, risk the fact that he could go get the mid boost anyway if he sees me going for it. So I try to fake. Like, I think I do this a lot where I, like, fake which way I'm going. And I'm pretty confusing to play against. Like, I know the boost isn't there, but it's just the replay glitch. Um, I fake going to that boost in case he tries to go for mid, and then I can use my speed to go get the other one. And he didn't fall forward. He just went for the back corner, which is fine. Get a little bump and then a decent shot to make him overcommit and then just shoot it. I could have shot that right side to make it even more secured. I think we're just going to let the play, rest of this game play out. I don't want to sit like analyzing a 4 1 at 20 seconds left. That's pretty silly. Free kickoff. Good turn on the boost. That's the kind of shot I was talking about before is just uh, looping wider on the ball and hitting the corner of my car. It gets you the most power out of anything. And like. In these 1v1 games, I'm always talking to myself in my head, like, what I want to do, what I'm thinking about. It helps me because if I think someone's watching me, which, you know, Johnny Boy and his audience will be watch, like, would be watching me in the videos. But just thinking about, like, do I look stupid doing this? No? Okay, do it. Do I look stupid doing this? Yes. Okay, don't do that. So, like, in 1v1, I'm very just, like, risk-free. And that's where I'm able to get a lot of pressure just because I... Make sure not to do anything silly or try things. I sometimes try things when it's, like, up goals, but... Otherwise, like, I'm pretty, like, safe. Just move in right into the next game. So I think I'm gonna, same game plan in this game. Just, like, stay, stick with me and then talk about my decisions. Um, it's a good first touch. Not my, be not my best 50-50 here. I think if I went a little bit earlier and didn't hesitate right here, I could have beat him. Which is what I wanted to do because he's stationary while I go up for this ball. And then I can just pop it off the wall and score uh, if he commits. But I just went a little bit too slow and ended up 50-50 uh, into him. A pretty good finish on the shot too. So, a little, little bit of a missed decision on the uh, the kickoff, but that happens a lot. So, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? So, it's all good. Alright, good kickoff, 50-50 from him too. I've, seen, I've, seen, I've noticed that in this game uh, so far already in the first two kickoffs that he's tried to focus on better placement on the, on the kickoffs. Got a little bit too close here. I probably could have just flicked that instead of uh, going towards goal, but he did make a good save. And the way I'm jumping out of this net here... Once, okay, <laughs> I hate the perspectives of those. Uh, right here, I'm trying to force the ball to come with me and get the boost. So the way I flip is to... Like, the way I'm trying to touch it is right here. I'm trying to hit this, this part of the ball. And when I'm looking at the ball a lot, I'm mostly looking at the contact point and then just making... Like, I have natural decisions, like, with my mechanics to like touch the ball where I want to but I just focus on the point that I want to hit the ball so that's going to make the ball roll exactly that way I can get the boost and then maybe force him in I'm not really worried about getting the ball again here I'm just trying to keep the ball close to me so he has to make a, a quick decision to get the ball away from my position so I think that's exactly what happens I touch the ball to that corner of the wall here I turn on this just in case uh he's there and then I'll turn away he's not close enough so I can actually go for this pop it up yeah 50 50 in the way not my best 50-50, but he does have low boost because I know I took his corner. So I can still grab the boost and the ball. A little bit heavy of a touch on the first touch there. Ends up throwing the ball away. Now I can get under his car. A little bit of a waste of boost as well. Probably going to try and wait for that boost to spawn. There it goes. Pretty good internal clock. Interesting fake, fake flip there. It's important not to flip half flip there. Because if I do half flip, I'll end up putting myself way too, way too far out of position. So instead, I just do a jump and 180 and do a bit of a wave dash. That wave dash caught him off guard. Probably didn't think I was going to be that fast with the ball once he threw the ball away. That part right there threw him off the wave dash. He was already committed to boosting into the challenge. Then I'm able to score here. So that wave dash was everything. So that's that's what that's what that 180 kind of helps me do is because, because I'm jumping at a 180, I can actually wave dash afterwards as long as I do it fast enough. You do have, like, uh, I think one and a half seconds to two seconds. Um, I don't think that was scorable. In my head, I didn't think it was scorable. I really want to just focus on the boost. Like, with the 13 boost, boost I have here and the amount of time I have to get around the ball, I already think he's going to get back and then get a free clear. So instead, I just hit it to the right side and go focus on the boost position. So I hit it right there. 
I don't think he was gonna make. I, I think he was gonna make it back. I mean, like I just don't. I wasn't sure in that situation. I don't really once again want to risk anything to give him free possession and keep the ball pace. Pop it over him. I don't end up getting a goal here because he gets a crazy bump on me right before I s score it. But he now has possession, and this is a situation I haven't really been in too much uh, this series so far. Um, once again, I'm just gonna take this boost. Oh, I actually do challenge right away. I'm a monkey. <laughs> I think uh, it was one of those things where I was like, I'm going to grab the mid boost. Like, in my head, I just told myself to grab the mid boost. And then I saw a pretty pretty poor, like, catch on the wall here. And I just challenged immediately because I thought maybe he wouldn't expect it. This is me being, like, a little bit unorthodox. And that's probably one of the things that people hate playing against me for is that, that I just... Sometimes I just turn my brain off because I, I know I should. I've been trying to do that more often, too, because I'm usually more analytical and just positional on the ball. But the more I do that, the more people realize. So he's used, uh, he's probably at about 70 here. Uh, maybe 60. I doubt he's at 60 though, unless he's got, I don't know, let's see. Oh wow, he's got 40. Wait, wait, what happened here? 96. Oh my. So that, that's interesting. Because like, I don't think, uh, I don't think he should have used 60 here with this. He should have used 73. And that extra boosting, like, getting to the ground isn't that important right now. Like, in maybe 3v3 it is, but in 1v1, like, using your boost to come down to the ground like that is pretty detrimental to your positioning. Like, because right now he's used almost all of it. I think he's actually probably at near zero. And I get 100. Probably could have scored here if I knew he was zero, but I was thinking that maybe he would save his boost a little more and he would have probably 40. Good placement on the shot. Gives me the ability to get the boost still. So it's not really important that I score once again. Not my greatest first touch. I gave the ball away there. Not what I meant to do. But right here, all I'm trying to do is just make him go. I see he's not, so I think he's like pretty low. I just place it to the corner. Ends up bouncing his car. You can see his car bounced off. So I know that he's going to bounce back into like the middle third of the net. And that gives me so much time to get this boost and then turn. That's why I made that first touch. And he ended up having a lot more pace than he did. Which is unfortunate. I should have uh, let the ball roll down the wall here first. And then bring it back if I really wanted to play properly. <laughs> but I ended up just hitting up the wall to try and be a little bit greedy and come back onto it. Which is pretty pretty unnecessary considering I'm up at like two goals to one. And uh, I can just bring it back, get some boost, recollect, make him push up the field and waste his resources. So pretty wasted touch here. I do end up getting the boost and then challenging here. I have to challenge there early since I'm facing backwards. If I half flip out of the field and come back, then he gives him so much space to push up with the ball and then make a play on me. Um, it's important just to get it over him and then see what he does next. So now I can go back and get this corner boost once he throws the ball up like that. I'm going to go like early again because he's just waiting on the floor. And then focus on the back corner before I grab the ball. Grab the other corner too. Focus on the starve. Pop the ball out. And this should be where I start to take shots. Really good save off the wall here. <laughs> I remember saying stop in the chat. Like stop. And this is where I, I noticed uh, my first opening. is uh, You know he makes it clear right? I know he's going to be pretty low, and I'm thinking that he's going to grab this pad, and this pad, and maybe this pad. Well, she did grab this pad. You can see his trail just came this way. Um, so I know he has a bit of boost, but then I see him turn away like this, and once this ball bounced off the wall, out to mid, I can basically just take a free shot, which is exactly what I do when I get a goal uh, to extend my lead. And there it is. He was just so starved that he just wanted the boost, and he thought he had time. <laughs> you can see me stop, actually. That's kind of funny. After the goal, you can see me stop to say stop. Look at this. Stop! I just yelled it in the chat. He kept saving ridiculous shots. Alright, so this is like one of the most interesting parts of the series where he actually gets tied up with me in these two goals. Let's see what I do. Okay. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> pretty bad turn and, and challenge. This is my mentality of trying to stay off the ball. Like, I see this as a throwaway, and... I'm thinking he might challenge immediately, which is, uh, which would have been good for him. I think he could have maybe beat me, which is really dumb for me to go, I guess. But then a pretty good catch and immediate goal. Good pressure. That was a pretty good play by him. And it came off a misplay by me, so mistake on my end. And that's usually how ones works. Person to make less mistakes usually doesn't get scored on as much. It was also a good air dribble. I actually thought that was off target. The, first, the second touch he made here... After he grabbed it, which is why I didn't jump as early as I did. Because, like, for some reason, my perspective told me, like, that one right there I thought was off target. But then I realized it was back corner. Like, it was just off the, the mark of being out. So, two really good plays back to back. You know, off off one misplay. That was a really good outplay by him. I didn't really have much op many options. Not much options. 
I'm not a fan of that overcommit by him. I think I do get an immediate goal too. Um, here he has like he has the ability to take this ball into that corner. I think if he wanted to take the immediate shot, he needs to loop further out from the ball first and get more power. Like right here, he could probably, you know, grab this pad and then hook shot into that to get power. Uh, and then that way it would force the ball over and then I, he could force my save into the corner while he takes my boost. But taking an immediate shot with space, um, being this close to the ball and that low speed, is just going to throw the ball away. And at this point you need to cut your losses, like jumping here at zero boost and then wave dashing into it. It's not really going to outplay me at all. So then he just ends up over committing into the net with zero boost and then I can score. So pretty self-explanatory. Just going to move on. I think he gets a kickoff goal here. Oh, maybe not. Oh, another another case of the let them over commit. Yes. Nice. Oh, the pinch goal. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I do remember this one. Um, but yeah, still an overcommit. I don't need that back corner right now, and I don't think he's able to like air dribble this in. So me thinking he's not going to air dribble it in, turn my head away, which is, you know, I'm already on track for the boost. I don't really need to look away. But at this point, I've already like missed the fact that he's touching it down and then into a pinch on the top of his roof. It was a small margin of error, uh, but he made it work, and I got outplayed. So two outplays in this game. That I, I maybe could have avoided if I was a little smarter with my my awareness. A little fake off the wall there. Make it pop. Once again, this is just a play for the boost. He's low. I'm going to get boost advantage now. I can bump him. Right here, I don't want to commit onto this touch. I'm just looking to bug him while he, while he has low boost. Force him in. Not my best touch. This is sort of what Kronovi was doing to me, or, or I was doing to Kronovi earlier, is making him touch like that. And that's not really what you want to do. He definitely could have just stolen my boost here. So I was trying to use my 23 to conserve, but once I saw that he didn't come in, I can just flick the ball up. Not to be too uh, too aggressive with this touch here. I'm just trying to make sure that it pops over him. I see he can't challenge yet, so I'm just positioning myself right under the circle of the ball. Do a little pop towards goal. Makes a turn, and then I can turn quickly um, with a drift shot. Um, what I do here is I just turn... Like I'm I'm doing this thing where I, uh, where I tap the, uh, the drift. I usually go like tap, 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 tap. And that makes me turn a little bit tighter. And in doing that, I can turn around really early and take a shot while he's still recovering off the roof of the goal. There we go. Probably could have taken a better placement into the top right, but you know, just securing it. Now we're up a goal. Uh, it seems like the rest of the game, he doesn't get a goal, but um, it does hold me pretty close in this match. I think this was the closest match out of all of them. So I see that he's going to grab the boost. I'm just trying to stay close and bump him. He's, gonna, he's doing what I was doing earlier, which is like focusing uh, boost resources. Everything in this game is a resource. So like if you're like considering all the resources to, to keep track of, I'm just going to write them out real quick. This is sort of what I do in my head. Let's use the A thing here. So resources in the game, uh, you'd think, okay, boost. Yeah, well, that's easy. Okay, but then there's also time. There's also uh, positioning. Uh, in 2v2 and 3v3, obviously there's teammates. Um, and then there's space, which space is cons like sort of similar to time, but using the space on the field, like maybe you want to hit the ball over to like, you're on the field here. Actually, I can, well, I can't el eliminate it now, but I'll just do this. Um, like if there's two players watching here and you have the option between putting the ball to the left or the right, it's probably better to put it to the left. Or maybe if you're considering trying to like confuse them, you put the ball near them. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to move back to this. So there's time, space, positioning. Uh, so there's man advantage, which uh, in 1v1 is pretty easy to explain. Basically, you have one player uh, on the field. If you get past him, then you're up a man advantage, obviously. Or you're tied in man advantage. And then there's like, um, you know, possession is even a resource too. Like all of these things are resources. And like, I'm basically trying to balance all of these. Like... If he has possession, then I want to try and use my positioning to make his possession worse. Or uh, if he's backing off, I want to use my space and time to make a play that's proper. Um, I also want to keep my boost at a good level, always man it, like monitoring what he has and how much boost he has. Basically, those are the kind of resources that you need to focus on. I don't, I don't know. Like those are the things I work, I work towards focusing on. And then things to do with the ball. Um, I'm actually just to make a new one. I'm gonna move on to a new thing. Uh, and this is the sort of thing I did with my coaching sessions. I would talk about these things. All right, so these are usually the good things to do with the ball. And, uh, well, you can think of these as like a playbook sort of thing. Um, so these are probably the good things to, uh, to do with the ball. All right, so here's the field. 
let's just do a little two little goals here um so when i'm talking about keeping possession obviously that means like that doesn't just mean uh keeping the ball to yourself keeping possession just means keeping the ball to space uh for your team so that that could mean like passing the ball over to a teammate so this is kind of hand in hand like if you pass to a teammate um make sure that this pass is in space once again it's one of the resources uh to keep possession for your team um obviously in 1v1s you can't really use this this option you are your your, your own teammate so using the wall to pass to yourself maybe in a spot where you can keep possession without your opponent applying pressure um that would be a good thing but anyway keeping possession so like in your side of the field making sure you keep the ball to yourself uh, away from the opponents um relieving pressure is like if a goal if a shot's coming towards net um and you you clear it to the middle that's not relieving pressure that's making a save but it's pretty poor so you want to make sure you save it to the corners or save it to a teammate up the wall or something um wherever you can uh into a spot where there's some space to let the ball sit for a second and then you can recollect yourself and make make a better save if you need to um or, or start to move down the field with your teammates outplaying an opponent is something like uh dribbling the ball up the field and then uh making a flick over someone who's challenging you and then you know sometimes that'll let go of possession the best thing to do is outplay an opponent and then still get possession obviously that's like a, a really good 1v1 play to make in 2v2 or 3v3 um and then 50 50s uh if you're at low boost like don't be afraid to make a 50 50 because out trying to outplay somebody at zero boost and the ball just immediately goes to someone on the opponent's team you're gonna be low boost and then your teammates gonna have to try, try and make a save if they can't outplay the opponents in midfield then you're the one stuck with zero boost to try and make a save so instead of get a 50 50 that that is good for your team and then they can start to play it on the field while you go get boost in the back corners or just in midfield or something get some pads the idea here is just uh you have all these different things you can do and you can think of like a play down the field as a combination of these so let's say someone's coming towards your goal and uh, they relieve pressure so you relieve pressure by uh, making a save but in doing so you also pass to a teammate and that keeps possession that teammate starts to move up the field um obviously you can receive a pass too that's that's not really on the list but i'm like that's basically like keeping possession or, or pass to a teammate it's the opposite version right it's reciprocal um so then you start to move down the field and apply pressure you outplay an opponent uh in midfield by flicking it over the ball uh, over them um then your teammate comes in they apply pressure then you, uh they relieve pressure you know they're doing their their side and then you pass to a teammate in mid um and then they apply pressure again which applying pressure could either mean shooting on target getting a goal or you know all that kind of stuff just like place it in a spot where they have to make a, a decent save or the ball goes in uh usually the best way to play this game is just wait until your opening is there and play the advantages to get your opening in the goal because nowadays with how good people are if you just try to take shots and expect the goal to go in and, and you know have a really positive aspect of like everything's gonna go in and you you kind of just pl play to the fact that it's in you always have to play as if the goal is not going in and play to the next hit because you want to get that little that little advantage that you can to keep the pressure on their half anyway we were, we were in that for so long that i don't even actually remember what we were talking about before so <laughs> let's see what i was doing here okay so yeah 12 boost i just wanted that big rant sorry about that um right here i'm still pretty low so i'm gonna go to the back corner and uh, he still has possession here. He can take a shot. I see him jump pretty early. That's where he throws it away. I hit to the right wall. Give myself some space. I go a little bit early just in case he does what he did earlier and jump jump as soon as possible. I don't want to go for that back corner. Because if I uh, go for this back corner and he clears this out immediately and booms it somehow, then he could uh, outplay me pretty hard. Pretty early challenge by me. Don't want to shoot that right away because he's diving. I missed the boost. Once again, a little fake. I'm just going to keep faking with zero boost here. I could have went and back, got that mid mid boost. Once again, since I'm low, I don't want to challenge. Just doing a really good job of wasting all this time. Just being really confusing for him. I'm just going to bump him, make sure he can't get near the ball. Ends up putting him too far away from the ball, and then I can turn on this ball and shoot. Get a pretty good outplay. The rest of this game was just uh, wasting time. I don't think there was too much happening. I just basically did the exact same thing I did, did there for the last 30 seconds. Just keep the ball high. Right here, I don't want to get too close to uh, to making him get an op opening. So I get a flip reset, but it goes over to the side. Could have maybe scored that. A little bit scary. That's what I was talking about. Like when I get leads, sometimes I do something stupid like this. Because honestly, if I just have this possession, 
<laughs> I could have came down underneath the ball and then just like brought it back here. Like if I really want to win this, but like I'm up two goals with 20 seconds. I try to do something fancy. Um, that's something that Forky does a lot actually, and he usually gets goals out of it, but I don't know. I don't like to do it because it's too risky. And the problem is like, I know it's risky. So in my head, I'm like a little bit less, I'm not less confident about it, but I just, I know it could go wrong because it definitely does for a lot of people. And I get openings from them a lot. But there, that's pretty much game, and uh, I can just hit the ball forward or, or like bait them in to hit the ball, and then it'll be the last few seconds. Let's move into the last game though. It's pretty long uh, <laughs> analysis here. I like to talk about uh, like what I think about the game and stuff because my head my head is pretty jam packed with thoughts throughout every match that I play. I missed the ball, the, bo the the boost on the corner there or the mid. Uh, he hits it pretty far to give the ball away. I think that was a bit of a misplay. Uh, here I can just like play time and mess with his touches like in 1v1 especially flipping into the ball is going to give possession away most of the time like right here he fl flips away gives the ball away so now i have time in the corner i have space um i have boost um, i see his spacing on the ball so i'm just waiting to see what he's going to do pop the ball a little bit early and i get a, a delayed flick into the back corner uh these are pretty hard to do but the idea right here is to once you make that first tap then you just air roll back and then air roll back into the ball again so like i air roll away and then back into the ball at the last second, right there, to hit it a little with a little more power. And from his perspective, it's pretty unsavable. Like he has to wait to see what I'm gonna do. I think going on the wall here was kind of his detriment. If he sat on the floor, because I'm not bringing the ball high right now, he doesn't need to go on backboard. If he stays like level to the ground on this this plane here, then he can just watch me, and then and then maybe close the gap. But he sits a little bit too passive because like this is a thing that three v three players do a lot. They go up on this backboard. Um, which I would do in this situation if it was 3v3, but this is 1v1, right? So you have to change it up a little bit because someone right here should be coming out in 2v2 or 3v3 to challenge me uh, while he comes back into defense. So it's just important to break those habits depending on the situation. It's all situational. And I think that's what like people complain about 1v1 a lot is that like some of your habits are a little bit different, but it's just important to know the differences between when to challenge because if you were last in 3v3, you shouldn't be doing this. And that could be a mistake. If you're forced into a last man in this situation and you do this, there's a good chance you get scored on. So you have to break that habit a little bit. I wouldn't say it's bad. I just think it's uh, it's good to know what to do in certain situations. Anyway, let's move back to me. I think I'm going to let most of this game play out just because it's basically the same mentality that I have uh, against him once I see his play style. He hasn't really changed much. I'm just trying to keep space. See, he's chipping it in so I get the boot bump on him first and take the ball. Bait him in. A little smarter by him not to jump immediately, so I see that he's changing it up a little bit. And that's a really poor challenge by me. It should be a goal, but for him. And there it is. So, right here, I probably should have uh, not flipped into the ball once I, well, I like had it on my wall. Like, my ball. My. my <laughs> the roof of my car. God, I can't speak right now. Once I brought it in like this and I see him challenging, I should hit the brakes a little bit and drop the ball. Uh, because once I try to flick that over him, I'm just going to get dunked into infinity. And then he gets a pretty free goal. So he was actually up in this game uh, for a while. He ended up going up 4-3. Or actually 5-3 was it? Yeah, 5-3. I got a pretty free kickoff goal here. So game's looking pretty good so far. We're at, we're at 4 minutes left. I'm up a goal again. Same kind of mentality. And then I go up 2 goals. Get a little bit too confident with my challenges. And then probably just throw away a few goals again. So good pop, pop of the ball to get some space. He stays on it. Which I'm fine with because now he's low. I'm going to turn in really early. And then I get a pre free goal. Right here I just see that he's going to stay with it. I see him wave dash. So I turn on and pop it, pop it. And then I get a free goal. Um, he really kind of showed his cards or, you know, revealed his cards by like having no boost there and challenging a little bit too early. It's sort of like what I did in that one kickoff where I tried to challenge him. Once again, just playing where he is to keep the boost off of him. I know he's low so I can't, he can't challenge. Make him pop it again. This is a dumb early challenge by me. I gave the ball away while he had low boost. He also gave the ball away as well, so then I get some time. Just gonna make him go again. Early challenge, but the ball does spill pretty pretty easily for me, and then I end up making a really dumb challenge here. Going a little bit too far with no boost. Uh, I could have went further back and got some pads. I missed that pad, missed that pad. And then could have got more boost pads on the back to save that one. So a little bit of over aggression, but then also mistakes on like the play on the ball. Little pop on the ball. 
seeing what he's doing, then getting the boost, making sure he wastes his positioning. So I don't need to get that boost unless uh, unless he tries to go for it. Like I already have a lot. And I go for the back corner now. Pretty bad throw away, but lots of space to work with. I see that he's going for me, so I'm just going to drive with the wall. He tries to go in for the ball, but there's no time to go for it when it's bouncing that way. So I really could have found an opening there and then flicked it. Good save. That was the dumbest hit in my life. Okay, so that was just bad. <laughs> oh my, that is so open. That one, that one hurts to watch back. I remember that. I was like, what am I doing? I'm so dumb. Look at me do a little, little turtle twist. You know... It's excusable. I haven't had too many mistakes this series, but that was a, that was a bad one. Also, this is, this is what I was talking about, like what Kronovi did. Like, right here, I have 16 boosts. I know that he has boosts as well. Like, he's already using it, so I know he's going to have pace. If he, if he flips on this, I'm going to give the ball away. But yet, I decide to hit the ball towards him. But I don't I don't overcommit. I go to the, the mid boost instead. I know that I've cut my losses. Like, I need to just back off. Get this off the wall so I can keep it close to myself. That was pretty close chance. I really should have scored that. I think it was definitely open. Once again, faking. I know that he, know that he has uh, the advantage on the ball. That was pretty dangerous. A little bit wasted boost there. I have six boosts now. End up playing into it too. So this all happened from how much boost I wasted here. I had 90. Used some boost here, but then I'm holding it down while I don't have to. My flip is already guaranteeing my pace. And I, I try to use it to get the boost before him. But I need to be a little bit careful here because he's landing perfectly. I'm still landing pretty sh like sharp, and I'm probably gonna like spin out, which I end up doing. And he's gonna grab my boost, so I a little bit careless by me to waste all my boost like this, and then get stuck in a situation where I kind of got baited into a hit, which I definitely should have shouldn't have done as well. Like once I just need to cut my losses and just let the ball roll there and see what he does, force his hand. But yeah, anyway, I get I get scored on because of that. Obviously, I definitely should be in all situations whenever that happens. Try to go for him. End up bumping him into the, the roof, but I do get the boost and the position. So this is where I start to like focus up a little bit. I'm like, okay, I'm down a goal. I need to get I need to get at least two goals to win this game. Grab the boost in mid, grab that boost as well. So I can just hit this forward because I know he's like behind on pace. So he does get the mid boost, but I can stay with this ball. Oh that was so unlucky. I, I almost scored that pretty banger flick. Let's see from his perspective. Oh my god, he was not saving that at all. <laughs> That's crazy. If my car like landed under the, the crossbar hit, it would have been a pretty juicy goal, not gonna lie. What does he do here? It's a pretty good save. Um, make sure to hold my flick at the flip at the last second. So I see he has his flip, so I, I wait for the last second to flip on the side. Not the best landing. Probably could have had a better better chance here, and then I'm just over committing. Getting antsy to try and score here. That's pretty dumb by me. Definitely should have just waited. Because if I just postured like I was for the rest of the games, he would have just hit this ball out to me right here, and then I could have just chipped it. Because his his car would have been trying to land here, and I could have went back left corner and shot. Um, probably just a little bit flustered by the goals I was letting in, but yeah, I was like, "You dumbass, sort yourself out." Let's see how I bring it back here in the last four goals. All right, so good kickoff. He's in a over back corner. I see that he almost went for mid, so I tried to like push forward for the ball, and then I changed my mind once he went. So a little bit aggressive by him. I got a pretty good shot here. I remember this one, top left corner. There's nothing he can really do about that one. He's like in a position where he's like pushing up to try and be aggressive, but then by that point he's already moved moved too far. And the power I get out of this is pretty uh pretty strong. Like that's really unexpected. The way I air rolled to the left, like at a 45 degree angle, ends up giving me the the pace and the ball to score score that one. That was just a good shot. Oh, I missed the kickoff. Alright, so the last few goals here. So I'm still down a goal. Got a minute left. See, he makes the first touch. I don't want to go for the back corner yet until I see that he's going to bring it down. Then I can get the boost. And then just challenge. He took his time a little bit too much there. And I'm able to get a challenge. Once I see him do that fake jump, I can come in and get a better 50-50. I didn't mean to skip that, sorry. Alright, pretty, uh, pretty good kickoff once again. And then an early flick. I think that's just immediately in, too. Yeah, that's tough. Like, I think he should have just went for that back corner. He was already pretty like committed on the pace. He was like, okay, I've get, gotten rid of the possession. I don't know why he turned in with zero. 
like I can't really shoot this that early. Like with the way that I'm under the ball and the pace I'm at, there's no way I can get that ball moving that fast. So he just needs to like cut his losses, which is a big thing in 1v1, just like knowing when to cut your losses. And even in 2v2, 3v3, like you should know when to just back off and like let, let the space, like sometimes ha like your opponent having the space to work with is sometimes in your favor because they can mess it up or uh, put pace in the ball to the fact that you're gonna actually like use the pace back to bite them in the ass basically. So we do get a goal off that flick. It's pretty unstoppable since he pushed up with 12 boost. Uh, I think that was savable if he went back corner. I wouldn't. I also wouldn't have flicked it if he went back corner because I'm only flicking it there because he pushed up on me. Uh, otherwise, I would just hold on possession. I think he might demo me here. The way I caught this gave him a little bit, a little bit of time to come to me. I tried to pop it to the corner quickly. Ended up working. Now he's trying to push up on the ball, and I get another free goal. I'm just gonna secure that win. So same game plan here for the rest of these uh, 26 seconds. Just going to hold on to possession. So I see that he's coming towards me. I'm going to fake it. I don't want to shoot it immediately until the bounce happens. Then I get the shot. Going to bring it to the corner. That could have been a goal if he uh, hit that a little better. He could have actually just looped around on the ball here. I meant, to, I meant to scoop it on the back corner to let the ball bounce this corner. And then I can go get the boost and keep the ball close to me. Uh, in doing that little scoop miss, he could have scored here if he went around on the ball. Instead of just hitting it immediately. I do get back in time. Try to go for the demo. I'm just going to sit on the floor. And then it's the last few seconds and it runs out. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it's a little bit different to what I usually do on my channel, but I did enjoy the salt line matches. It was a lot of fun. If you do want to see more of this, uh, let me know. I definitely enjoyed making this video because I love talking about my, my mentality in the game. I think it's very unique to a lot of players, if not all the players in the game. I'm definitely not showing all of my cards <laughs> in what I'm seeing. Uh, I'm trying to keep it, you know educational but not revealing to what i'm actually thinking like I'm, I'm definitely thinking about a lot of this but i'm not showing all my little micro movements and stuff i think that, i think the closest thing i got to was that little jerk like the car jerking i was talking about but a lot of my movements are about body language and how i like make people make decisions so but take that as you will i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, i'll catch you guys in the next one let me know once again if you guys want to see uh, another match maybe i'll keep going in sequential order of my matches if not let me know what game you guys want to see have a good one